Evening, ladies and gents. My name is Simon Brown, doing this evening's uh, trading masterclass on binary options. Always a quick bit of intro here. This follows on from our boot camps. Boot camps very much the theoretical side of trading, which is where we start. Things such as risk, things such as psychology, things such as offshore trading plans, etc. Those 12 videos exist. Just one lap.com slash bootcamp. Key distinction masterclass is looking at hard practical trading processes and the like, as opposed to the theory behind trading. Before we go in the scams, so the thing I get asked most, second most frequently about is I've seen this amazing advert on Facebook or some dodgy website I was on and I can make vast amount of money. Is it real? And the answer is no. I mean, if you can make 85% in minutes or if you can make $282,000 in a week, why are you on Facebook putting out adverts? Man, you just bought Greece and you're sunning it on some Greek island. <clears throat> they scams. They, they, they scams for a couple of ways. The first way we know that they're a scam is that they promise you things that are totally unrealistic. I mean, these are not realistic potential gains. Some dude who knows nothing about nothing. No disrespect to, to men in hard hats. I've worn a hard hat once. Um, you know, this, they, they are scams. What are they trying to do? They're trying to hit our most prime basic greed. Uh, we're greedy. I mean, that's just a human nature. I'm not, it's not a, not a judgment on anyone in this room. It's just what we are. And they're going to promise us that we can be vastly rich in a double quick time. The truth of the matter is we can't. The truth is they scams. Most of them are operating out of places such as Cyprus. So if there's a problem, I know some guys who actually did, they, they fell for one of the FX ones and they sign up onto the platform <coughs> and they made money. Then they tried to withdraw the money and they never succeeded in withdrawing the money. Six months after they started to try to withdraw the money, the provider just disappeared. Um, and what can they do? Short answer, absolutely nothing. The other one is they promise you free sign-up bonuses, etc. There's only one way they can pay for that sign-up bonus. They expect you to lose it. I mean, that's the only way it works. I mean, it's just that simple. So the problem with binary options is that it is this, it's a tough product to trade. I'm not going to deny that. It's a tough product to trade. Is there profit to be made? For sure there is. This does not help. This is frankly, I mean, we're calling it a scam because I'm being polite because this is being broadcast. Um, they are scams. And anything that promises you to get rich in a hurry is a scam. There's one way we get rich quick. Marry money. Everything else takes time. Going to be the same story here as well. So those are the scams. Got them out the way. Um, we know IG is not a scam because you're all here. You can physically see it. You can touch the stuff. And that, that is, to my mind, and I'm, maybe I'm, it's because I was born in the, you know, I was at sc in school at the 80, in the 80s. But I, you know, even when I go offshore and get a U.S. stockbroker or something, I do a U.S. stockbroker that I, that, that, that's got name recognition. The, these, these companies that I've never heard of before, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, I want, I want something tangible. But maybe if you're the new millennial generation and everything exists in a cell phone, maybe I am just getting old. So let's move on. So binary options. It's based on a single question with a single yes or no answer. That simple single question, a single yes or no answer. For example, we could have a question. Will Simon finish his presentation by 7 o'clock? Yes or no? If you say that I will and I do, you win. If you say that I will and I don't, you lose. Between now and 7, there will be betting happening on, those, on that likelihood of it happening, right? As we get, at this point, we're still 54 minutes away from 7 o'clock. I could talk fast, I could talk slow, I could miss some slides. So the betting's quite tough to try and really work it out. But once we are kind of two minutes to seven, well, pretty much the betting's, you know, you kind of know. Perhaps I've finished talking by two minutes to seven, in which case it's a slam dunk. If I'm still talking, then it's starting to get a little bit edgy as to which way it goes. And we're doing exactly that, except we do it with financial instruments. So a typical question is, we look at indices. This is a grab from yesterday. So FTSE to finish down, in other words, 704.439, or FTSE to finish up, in other words, above 704.439. Important point. If it finishes exactly that, it's considered up. Those are the rules of IG. So an exact hit, which is frankly unlikely, but an exact hit is considered an up. So during the course of the day, as the FTSE is moving, the likelihood of one of those or the other happening, the numbers will be changing in the underlying. Obviously, as we get closer to the end of the day, we get a better likelihood of what will happen. And if the FTSE finishes up at the end of the day, the top one pays 100 and the bottom one pays zero. 
So if you'd entered the bottom one and you hadn't exited it and the FTSE ended up and you'd bet it ended down, you end up with zero. And that's a big deal because it means your risk is 100%. In truth, we can manage it. Be through moment, sir. We can manage that risk by saying, I expect the FTSE to end down, but whoa, it's going up. Let me exit the position. We can exit. You're not locked in. So, so at, the, at the close, at the end of the day, and important to know when they close, and I'll touch on that in a bit. But for example, with the SA40, which is a local index, closes 1649, 11 minutes to 5, just before we go into closing auction. At that point in time, one of the true statements is correct, right? Either we closed up or we closed down. The one that is correct pays you 100 points, and the one that you were wrong on, nothing. So whatever you put down is gone. You can, of course, and I'm going to touch on it, don't worry. You can, of course, you said it was going to happen. It goes against you. You can exit the position. So you're not locked in. It's not a case of, so if you go to the casino and you put the money on red, that's it. Money's on red. One or two things is going to happen, right? You're going to double it or you're going to lose it. Ignoring the zeros for the moment. And some of them have double zero and I've even seen triple zero. At the casino, money on red. Now you stand back and you wait. Either you double or you lose. No intermediate. Yeah, yeah, but no, because if you start, in the casino example, if you start seeing the ball heading towards black, you could quickly grab your money off the table. Okay, in, in the casino example, they're going to cut your fingers, but you get what I'm saying. So it is just a simple question. Will the FTSE, which is the index, finish down, finish up? Then the question is, by when? Now, you get, you get binaries that run for one minute up to binaries that run for a week. You also get ladder binaries. I'm not going to go into the exotics. But the short version is you've got to know what is the underlying product and what is that expiry date, time, process. And it's quite easier to be in a sec. I'll show you where you find. You click on the info. It will tell you. I know this is daily. There's more that I cut off in the screen. If you're looking at the screen, it tells you it's daily. So the benchmark is the previous day's close, and the FTSE level is taken from the LSE. So don't go and find a FTSE level on Bloomberg or on Google or on your uncle's brother's niece nephew's website. They use the LSE FTSE number. And that benchmark will be the previous day's close. You can do them on everything. You can do them on oil. You can do them on indices, of course. You can do them on some stocks. You can do them on currencies. You can do them on commodities. You can do them on Bitcoin. You can do them on almost absolutely anything. Now, all you basically need is a reference price at some point. As long as you've got a reference price, you can put a, you can put a binary on it. So in some places, they call it a lifestyle product, which is lifestyle product is euthanism for gambling. The, the point being is that, I mean, can it be treated as a gambling product? Yeah, uh, absolutely. This can be looked at as a gambling product. Where basically, you're like, oh, and the, you, know, you can go insane risk. And when the market is two minutes before close and 300 points in the green, you can say, ha ha, I'm going to buy the one that says close in the red. Um, and you'll pay two bucks for it. And if it does close in the red, you'll get paid 100. Of course, how many times does our market lose 400 points in the last two minutes? Not very often. We've only got so many finance ministers we can fire, and then we run out of things to move the market. Um, but the point is, is to manage that process. And certainly, a lot of the hype around how it is sold is actually sold as a gambling product. But again, we can make this actually work. We can turn it into, into proper processes. But we understand this first key part that makes sense. You've got your underlying, whatever it might be that you're binarying on. It's up or down by period. When is that? End of the day. And if it closes up and you're right, you get 100. And if you're wrong, you get zero. So you could have bought that at 90 points. It closes up, you get 100. You made 10. You bought it at 90, it closes down on you, you get zero. Of course, if you, cl if you buy it at 90 and it closes down, you had a lot of time to get the heck out of Dodge which is why this is going to be a fairly mechanical process because you need to be able to exit. Do you lose money on the way down? Yes. So if you bought that at 90 and then bailed at 60, you've lost 30 points. There's a value to the points. I'll come to that in a moment. So yes, you've lost money. But you've only lost 30 points. Instead, if you held to zero, you've lost 90 points. So the risk-reward is, as it suggests, completely binary. But there is a caveat. As I said, with the casino, money on red, that's it. Nothing you can do. Here, you can reach in and quickly grab it out again. You take a position and you say, cool, I expect X to happen. And if it isn't happening or it's going against you, you're losing money, you can limit the amount you lose 
by closing the position, which is a good old-fashioned way of doing it, right? You, you go long of anything. You, you were, let's say, I don't know, you were long something. You were long one of the banks today, and the banks start tumbling. What do you do? Well, you exit the position. You close it. You limit your loss. No different here. No different here whatsoever. Typically, they're viewed and they're sold as, to your comment, the gambling product. We put the money and stand back and wait and see what happens. And that's not trading. That's gambling. In which case, go to the casino because the drinks are free. Here, yeah, the fruit juice is free, but there are no drinks. So we can manage that risk reward. We have to manage the risk reward. Otherwise, we get completely and absolutely killed in the process. Some do's treat as a totally different trading strategy. Design a trading strategy that is designed with the concept of binaries in mind. I've got two of them coming up, and then we'll look at, at political ones in Bayesian theory, Bayesian probability rather, but treat it different. Don't take one of your existing ones and say, well, if I see a reversal on the Aussie, I'll just go and take a trade in the binary. You see reversal in the Aussie, you've got a lot of things. You've got time on your side, you've got 24-hour markets. It's a whole, this is a whole different. You need a system that is designed specifically for the product and monitor and discipline. You know, if, if, you were, if you were long one of the banks at close yesterday and you haven't exited the position, you are trading badly, you have not done a perfect trade, and you are significantly poorer for it, but you live to fight tomorrow. If you take the wrong position in a binary and you do nothing about it, there's no tomorrow, the position's gone. We need to manage them. <coughs> we need to be proactive, and we need to be very aggressive. Don't try and be clever. Don't try and, and we have a, 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 a friend whose favorite stunt was to log on when the market was up 300 points with an hour to go and take a binary that said the market would close down. Because then you pay 10 points for the binary. And if he's right, he makes 100. Except he was never right. Not even once. Not even once. Yeah, so, I mean, if you want to treat it like that, then it has been treated like a gambling product. Then it's outside it from it, and, and there are better ways to do that. And stay away from major news events. Now, Praveen Gordon uh, being summoned to appear in court on the 2nd of December today is a major news event. But no one woke up this morning and said, hey, guys, at half past 10, we're going to summon Praveen Gordon. But there are ways. We do know what will be happening. We do know when non-farm payrolls will be coming out. We do know when GDP data is released. We do know when CPI. We know when data is coming. So yes, there are surprise events. Yes, those are horrible. Sometimes they will be in your favor. Sometimes they will work against you. But if you know that it's Friday afternoon and it's time for non-farm payrolls at 2.30 uh, uh, Central African time, do not be in a position at 2.30 Central African time. There are ways, and we will discuss it, we've done it in some of the others, where you can trade news events, typically using FX to a lesser degree indices, but usually FX, and you can trade the news events. Here, yeah, just sit out. Don't think that you know what the data will be or how the market will respond. Because you don't know what the data will be, and you don't know how the market will respond. So just sit out. Once the data's in the market, now you can transact. Now you can get involved again. But don't sit across those, dark, those, 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 those news events. And we'll come back to it and talk around how we identify them, what's critical, and which are not critical. Does that make sense? I am on track to finish with by 7 o'clock. So the one biggest problem with binaries is spreads. What's a spread? You've got a buyer on one side and a seller on the other side, and that difference is what we call the spread. Some of these binary companies who operate out of Mediterranean islands um, have spreads as wide as 30%. I can promise you now, there is zero chance of making money in a 30% spread. My first strong piece of advice to you this evening is don't even trade the, the local binary, the South African binary. Look at that spread, 16.5 to 24.5. That's an eight-point spread. On, that's, a 30, that's technically a 30. 75.4 to 83, that's an eight-point spread. That's 10%. Those spreads are too wide. Those, because understand what happens is you hit this. So this is, so ironically, this was yesterday, right? South Africa to finish down. This was a screenshot early in the morning. And where was our market at that point? Way down. What happened? Our market then turned green and then ended the day red. So you would have been all over the place, made and lost. The trick with this is that you buy at 83 and a half. And then if it goes against you, it's not that the 75 is no longer 75. The 75 is now 65. And you, so you've suddenly just had to cross that spread and get absolutely killed. So the local binary, the SA40 binary, my top tip, leave it alone.
that spread is too bad, There's, you, you can't make money off that spread. You might, but it, it, it hinders you. It makes it harder to taking money out of your pocket. Go and trade the others. We'll touch on them in a moment where the spreads are a point, maybe one and a half points. At some points, I've seen the spreads as narrow as 0 0.7 of a point. That's the spread. That is a canyon. Um, when you're wrong, exit. Exotics. So these are the examples of the ones that exist on the FTSE daily. There's also the FTSE 30 minute, there's also the FTSE weekly and others. But just on the daily, we've got up or down. That's what we're looking at here. We've got 10 point targets. In other words, will it go 10 points up or 10 points down? Which will it do first? We've got highs and lows. We've got ladders. We've got touches, tunnels, daily highs and lows. We've got a 12 o'clock, a 5 o'clock, and a, sorry, 3 o'clock and a weekly. Monster range. Now, the 12 and the 3 I have interest in, and I'll explain to you why in a moment. The others I have no particular interest in. Daily highs, tunnels, one touches. We're taking an exotic product and we are further exotitizing it. Nah, it's just like, hey, look, I got some rum I've never seen before. I know, let's add battery acid. That'll make it fun. No, man, it's not going to make anything. Well, it is. It's going to make a mini, it's sort of Samsung Note 7. It'll explode in your face. Sorry, Samsung. Actually, not sorry, Samsung. Um, you make phones that explode, you deserve all the dissing you get. Um, so the key one is go trade the offshores. They're, 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 you can, and when I say the offshores, I mean, okay, so now, now you venture into them, which offshore? Because, I mean, you can pretty much now trade any country in the world except Cyprus. Um, they, they've all got exchanges, they've all therefore got binaries trading on IG. To my mind, trade the two biggies, right? If you're going to move, if you're going to go, if you're going to step off the South African market into an offshore market, you go to London or you go to New York. Why go somewhere else? I know you want to go to Timbuktu because maybe ah no 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 no, it's Joburg, it's London, it's New York. End of story. If you want to be really exotic, Sydney. You know the problem with Sydney? Bloody time zones. Sydney's like. Completely, it's what nine hours ahead of us, or something like that. It's a horrendous time zone. It's London, it's Joburg, or it's New York. We trade those three, we leave the rest alone. So let's look at some binary systems. Same system, run two different ways with some different twists and methodologies on it. Uh, just for the point, and I have been trading this system in a demo account for the last six weeks. Um, it works. But it, it, can be a, it can be a time suck sometimes, but that's, you know, if you know anything about me, okay, me, Simon, what am I? Lazy trader. If my trading's taking me more than two minutes a day, I think I'm like, yo, I get tense. This stuff was sometimes taking me like an hour a day. Man, I was getting tense. Not every day necessarily. So two systems. We trade the FTSE 100 daily. We trade the close, but the, as mentioned a moment ago, that the 12 and the 3 o'clock are of interest of me. So there's a 12 o'clock, there's a 3 o'clock, and then there's a close. So there are actually three binaries that you could trade during the course of a single day on the FTSE. And you've got the ditto on uh, Wall Street as well, where you can actually go and pick different close points. And it makes no difference. So the system here says you trade in the last hour. The close of the FTSE is 1629 UTC, which is... Uh, depending on where they are in summertime, one or two hours uh, 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 behind us. Um, you want to get in an hour before. So if you also want to trade the 12 o'clock, that's cool. It'll be 12 o'clock UTC. If you want to trade the 3 o'clock, that's cool. It'll be the 3 o'clock UTC. In essence, if you want to be that day trader who's spending their days in front of the screens, you do that. You do the 12, the 3, and the 430. And then you come back for the U.S. close, which is uh, 11. And if you run back, it'll be 9 and it'll be 7. So you can trade essentially, potentially 6 in a day. The point what you do is you don't worry about what the market is actually doing. You don't worry about what the market has been doing during the course of the day. You log on to the system an hour before the close. So you log on an, at, at 15.29 uh, UTC. You log on an hour before the close. Do you bother to look at the FTSE chart? No. <coughs> because in truth, you have no idea what the binary is going to be doing. You have no idea where the, where, where the, the, the market's going to be closing. And I know you can spin some technical analysis and the like on it, but that's not going to work in this environment. You don't even bother to look at the FTSE chart. You go straight to the binary chart, and you, or to the binary value, and you see what is the binary trading at. And there will be two. There will be a to close green or to close red. And if one of them is offered 85 points, you buy it. 
And if neither is offered at 85 points, you walk away. And you come back for the next one. And that's why I say, so is every chance you log on an hour beforehand and you have a look, nothing happening, boom, shut it down, move off. And this is why it can actually work quite well if in conjunction with trading other things. So if you are a day trader or an F, you know, trading index futures or FX or something like that or even equity, this can fit quite nicely in the sense that you know, you're spending there quickly, an hour before you log on, you have a look, see, is it there? If not, you carry on. If it is, you've got a trade, you take it. The critical point is make sure there's no news due. My preferred site is forexfactory.com. They grade the news by red, orange, and yellow. And if it is a red news event, don't trade. Just don't trade. If there's a red news event happening in the next hour, do not enter a trade. Walk away. Because red means high risk. You don't know what's happening. It might be nothing at the end of the day, but it might be something. And then it literally is just a case of look at the point. So understand, one point, 10 pounds. So that 100 points is 1,000 pounds of contract. That's the value of it. I've been talking about points purposely. So you look at that. Let's say you buy the contract at 90 points and you're right and it expires and you get 100. You've made 10 points profit. 10 points, 10 pounds a point, you make 100 pounds. You can trade fractions of contracts. We'll come to that in a bit. And I'll come to position size as well, so don't stress the, 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 the position size. The point is quite simple. How do you know if you can enter the contract? If the seller in the market, if the offer is at 85 points, take it. If it's at 86, sure. If it's at 84, fine. If it's at 80, walk away. If it's at 90, walk away. 90 or higher, 80 or lower, just walk away. You want the seller to be at 85. Why? Okay. I'm not going to go too deep and complicated, but how are binary options priced? Essentially, they're priced like normal options. They use a black skulls equation. Black Skulls has a bunch of input. Most notably, when does it expire? What is the strike price, which is the close from yesterday? Um, what is the volatility? And how much time is left? How much time is left is important. You can almost view it with an hour to go. That what they're saying is, if you buy at 85, there's an 85% chance that this will expire and you will pay 100. Understand what an 85% chance says. It says out of six times, five times it'll happen, one time it won't. You know, if I say to you there's a 70% chance the box will win a game of rugby in the next 10 years, if they don't win, I wasn't wrong because I didn't say there was a 100% chance. We look at someone who says there's a 60% chance and when they're wrong, we're like, ha-ha, you were wrong. No, no, if I say there's a 60% chance of something happening, I'm also saying there's a 40% chance of it not happening. So weather is no. So weather is exactly it. Weather is so. If you if you go and look at it, and I'm going to talk about Bayesian probability in a moment. This Bayesian probability starts with weather. Starts 1956. The man who discovered chaos theory was a meteorologist, of course, because there ain't no more chaos than there is weather. <coughs> in our attempt to predict it. So the plan is quite simple. You buy at 85 points. Therefore, if you are right, and you don't matter. Is this a to close green and you make money or to close red and you make money does not matter. You don't care. You're buying at 85 points. You're trading probability. You're not actually trading price. Yes, price drives that probability. But what you're trading is probability. You're not trading price. Trading price is when you physically go trade the index or the commodity or the FX. What you're trading here is probability. You don't want to push your probability too high to 1995 because then your reward is yeah, And you don't want to push it too low because then your risk is too high. So I ran, I mean, I, I, I ran, I don't, I don't know how many it was. Basically, I said to Excel, like, take this and work out the best probability. And it actually came out at 83 and some change. So that's the best number to buy. So if it's at 85, you buy it. Then what do you do? You watch. And if it drops so that you could now exit at 70, i.e. you've now lost 15 points, you exit immediately. So your downside risk is 15 points. Your upside profit, 15 points. Your win-reward ratio, 1-1. One, one. 
the horrible win reward. The point being is you're taking trades with an 85% probability. When we are trading equity, when we are trading indices, when we are trading commodities in FX, if you've got a trading system that has a, a probability of much, a, a win rate much above 55%, you've got a knockout win rate. If I could get my index trading system to an 85% probability, man, I would have bought Crete by now. Cyprus, wrong island. Ugh, I'll buy them all. <laughs> I got friends. I wanted my friends to each have an island. <coughs> I'm trading systems that have got, that have got win ratios around about, the, the, the win-loss ratios of between 45 and 53%, and they make money. Here, I'm coming in with um, significantly higher. So my loss reward is one to three. As long as I make money in three and lose money in one, I'm home dry. In fact, if I make money in two and lose money in one, I'm home dry. The numbers actually say I make money in, f in, in, in 4.8 of them and I lose in one. So it's saying I'm getting a five to one, which is exactly a kind of perfect five to one fits in with the 85. You can do exactly the same. So that system can now be replicated onto any platform, onto any, onto any product that you want. So I've said here, you trade in the last hour, which is the close is 1629, but we can go to Wall Street where the close is 2059 UTC. Remember that there's a staggers. If we go back to the exotics here, there's also a 12 and a 13, which is uh, 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So there's different points that we can grab at as well and trade different ones during the course of the day. So we go to the US. Exactly the same. One difference. Two differences, rather. Firstly, different close time. Secondly, different value per point. $10 instead of £10. Makes perfect sense. Same process. Last hour. Check there's no news. We'll come to the 1%. If you can buy at 85, buy it. Doesn't matter which one you're buying, just buy it. If it drops to 70, where you would be a seller at 70, exit. And if it doesn't, it goes to 100, you take the 15 points. So that's exactly what I was about to say. That was my point, and then we interrupted each other. My problem with this is quite simple. I've got to sit in front of a computer for an hour. And I can do that, but I'm going to get distracted. I mean, I'm, 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 I will be distracted. Man, I'm like that six-week-old puppy, man. Everything distracts me. You know, I breathe, and it distracts me. So my, the hard thing for me was distraction. And there's hacks around that. So what I did is I set alerts. I set, and I'll show you how to set the alerts. So you can set the alerts on the system. So what I would be doing there is I'd be sitting there watching, and of course I wasn't. By now I was 500 miles away playing Twitter or something like that. And then my computer goes beep, 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 beep. And it's like, whoa, ho, ho, time to pay attention like that. And I don't set the alerts at 70. No, no, set it at 75. So that it's, I now know it's getting there. Ah, no, great point. Yes, so, the, so, so, so I, I dissed uh, the local market and there was, so, so there, there are two tricks here and that actually, ironically, is exactly where it came out. There's a couple of tricks. Firstly, this was at half past 10 in the morning. You don't want to take it half past 10 in the morning. The reason you take it in the last hour is you've got high probability of it closing in that position. Because what did this market do from then? Uh, so that was to be down, right? At that point, the market was down. As I said, it then went uh, green. And the bottom contract went down to about 20 points. And then it eventually, literally, I think in the last 10 or 15 minutes, we closed red by about year much. The problem is you don't know what's happening. The best one to trade is going to be New York, right? Because if you're trading this in the czar, let's pretend the spread isn't a killer. And I'll come back to that in a second. You're trading this in the local. Um, and then New York opens. And frankly, when New York opens, no one cares what's happening in Joburg anymore. But you've got a ditto issue in, if you're trading in, in, in the UK. Yeah, the London's a big market, but the world's got one and a half eyeballs on New York and half an eyeball in London, and they don't even know where Joe Berg is. The trick with this, so let's pretend this is four o'clock. The trick with this is my spread. So 83.5, love that price. But look at that. A five and a half point move, and I've got an exit. That's my problem. It's because of that widespread. Now, if you're trading this in, 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 in London or New York, you're paying 83 and a half. You've probably got the buyer at 81 and a half or 82, which means that I've got an 11 or 12 point move as opposed to just a five point move. And the trick is quite simple. We get five point moves twice as often as we do 11 or 12. So what happens is you get stopped out a lot more often, not because of the move, but because of the spread. And it's why we can't trade local. When that value is 70, 
you're out. When that value is 85, you buy it, that becomes 70, you're out. And because you're trading on each side of the spread, I'll be with you now, because you're trading on each side of the spread, you need that spread to be minute. Oh, good point. So how much time do I give it? So short answer, I log on. And if it's at 85, I hit it. If you want, at any point in that hour, at, at 85, I will take it. So if it, if, say it's at 90 and it slips to 85, I'll hit it. It does mean I'm trading the wind is against me, but I'm, I'm saying, you know what, there's still an 85% chance. And in truth, time has passed. Say you log on and it's at 75, but 20 minutes later it's at 85, hit it. So at any point in that hour, you can hit it. I'm way less disciplined in that sense. So the way I did it was, boom, is it right now between 82, 83 and a half and sort of 86 or so? If it is, trade it. If not, walk away. But you can now monitor it. And if you, you know, if you want to, if you, if, if you, you know, I, I, have, I have other jobs and things to do that demand my time. But if you're saying, I can give an hour a day, you know, or do, the, do, do, do New York and, and give an hour in the evening. And then say, cool, I'll sit there and wait. And as soon as that's 85, I'll hit it. That will significantly increase your quantum of trades. Um, it's not going to change your risk reward and it's probably not going to change your, your, your win loss either. Ah, hold on, point. I was getting two or three a day. Yeah, no, I was getting two or three a day. So about, about a half of them, because typically at that point, with an hour to go, there's an 85% chance that it's, I mean, it, you, you're almost at the end of the day. So the way, the way probability works is as you get closer to the point, the, the higher there should be a level of conviction. Because it either is or, or isn't. You know, it's one way or the other. And you're, as, so take it this way. Say the close is here. So, and the, the binary we're looking at is, says to close above yesterday. If the market goes sideways during the course of the day, that binary is going to rise as the day moves on. Because the likelihood, the probability of a green close gets higher and higher and higher. At the beginning of the day, you're 50 points in the green. Nice but you've got nine hours of trading to happen. With 20 minutes to go, you're 50 minutes in the green, but you've only got 20 minutes of trading to go. In other words, you've only got a 20-minute window where it can turn on you. You can take profits on the way up, yes. Now, I'll come, so that's 1% is, is percentage risk of the portfolio. Yeah, so yes, so if you traded three times, you, but you would, the, the beauty of it, you're only ever in one trade. So you took 1% risk three times, but at any one point you had 1%. Look, there's a chance that all three trades go against you, and then you're down 3%. But the point of that is, I mean, you know, if you have three <coughs> losing trades in a row in binary, and you're only down 3%, you're winning. It doesn't feel like it, but... <laughs> um, is there always a market maker? So there's a market maker. You trade market maker. Always. Yeah. They're always there. The, I mean, the, 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 the numbers are just updating all the time, all the time. Fees are in the spread, so there's no additional fees to it. They're built into the spread. Um, partly why, so there's two reasons why South Africa is a much wider spread. One is our market is less liquid. We have a wider spread in our, in our, in our futures contracts, and we have higher fees than London and New <laughs> So, so... <laughs> um, I'll quickly deviate. I'm going to spend a bit of time on it. I'll quickly deviate to politics. I wouldn't. I'll tell you why. Because the whole point here is there's no forex factory. What do we know is going to happen in the remaining 28 days before the election? What we know is that the, the tape that got released on Friday, by the time we get to the election, that's going to be kids play. I don't know what it's going to be. But we've currently, no, think about it. We've currently got Russia hacking the, the, the DNC and, and, and releasing stuff from that. We've got, we've got Donald Trump just, I mean, you know, under normal elections, you take Hillary at 85. The way that the election is right now and the way things are set, you take Hillary at 85, absolutely. And in fact, let's quickly step back. I'm going to touch on it lightly. I'll give it more detail. The time to do a trade on this election was actually probably in October or November of last year. And I put on a trade. Unfortunately, it was a dummy trade. At that point, Hillary and Bernie were still head-to-head, -head, and you could buy Hillary at 51. And it's like, you know what, Bernie, I might love you, but no chance. Not going to happen. And then there were three Republicans that you would have bought. You would have bought Bush because you can't believe that a Bush wouldn't have made it to the end. You would have bought Trump because it was just the craziest thing you ever saw. And how I've met Americans, they like crazy. And then you got Rubino. But for the three of them, you only pay, you paid 15, 15, 15. So you paid 45 and you paid 51. You've paid 96. 
but your payout's only 100. However, what you did is you sold Trump. At some point in the process, when you, because at some point Trump was up in the, in the low 50s. So when Trump got to the low 50s, the other two Republicans were now zero. They were toast. You bailed them, but you sold your Trump. So what you do is you almost create exotic bets. And now we're really stepping into the world of lifestyle product, as they euthanistically call them. Um, they're fun. But the, 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 I mean, the U.S. election, I just, so if you go read Scott Adams, he would, he's been saying forever, he's been saying, he, Scott Adams is the creator of Dilbert. He's been saying there are going to be blowout news events of unheralded proportions in this, in this election. And so far, he's right. You know, the, the, the tape they found last week, the Hillary emails are merely scratching the surface. As soon as you move into the elections, it's a whole different game. Because let me quickly go to, uh, hold on, let me quickly jump ahead to that. Brexit. That was the betting at 8 p.m. on Thursday and by 6 o'clock Friday morning, the leave had won. The, 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 this, this, so Hillary at 85 is essentially saying 85% chance that she wins, 15 Donald wins, and this was Brexit. And, and Brexit was one of those things where, man, I, I woke up that morning on leave in Durban, and I looked at my phone, and I saw that Brexit had exited, and I just assumed I was being scammed. <laughs> no, I mean, like, really. So I put the phone down. I went and made some coffee. I went back on my balcony watching the sea, having a cigarette. Man, it still says that. And I couldn't even tell my wife. I, I've never, I mean, I'm not a man who gets speechless. I, I speak for my living. I had to have three cups of coffee before I could go to send my wife, so they voted to leave. And she's like, who gives a beep? I'm like, yeah. So what you almost do is you trade contrarian. So what you do is in the case of Hillary at 85, you say, no, nah, I'm taking Trump at 15. Because Trump is not going to win. Or is he? I mean, the point is, firstly, he might. Secondly, if Trump's currently at 15, he's going to at some point in the next 28 days be at 30 or maybe 25. So you almost want to go contrarian. What you don't want to do is go contrarian at 52, 48. You want to go contrarian at the extremes. But I'm going to come back to that. that that's the political binaries, different game. Um, and hell, I mean, Trump could win, hey? Crazier stuff has happened. Does that make sense? Cool. When we do the follow-up webcast next Tuesday, 4 p.m., I pushed it later in the day. So we've got New York open, so we can do some of the, the London stuff as well. Um, We'll go into it in a lot more detail practically on the website, but I want to run through some of that process. Uh, you can set indicator alerts. Was, uh, that's what I want. So you, on, on the binary for, for whichever one, this happens to be Wall Street to finish up. Understand this indicator alert expires at the end of the day when the binary expires. And you say, give me market price. You say, one minute bid Below 75, remember I'm out at, 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 six, at 70, so below 75, immediately you give it a name and the name is panic. <laughs> no, it's time to panic. Now, whatever you're doing, stop doing it and exit the position. So this is going to pop up. So you don't need to be glued to your screen, but you need to be able to transact in a hurry. The easiest way is in front of a computer, but you can use it at mobile or a tablet or something like that. Um, they move fast, but unless, unless things are crashing, you, you've, you've got a few minutes. You've, you've got some time. And then you set that, and then, once, as I said, once it's gone, it's gone, and then tomorrow you come back, you reset it. So it starts off, you just click it, and you say set indicator alert, and then you run through that process there. Position size. So typically we trade 2% risk here. I'm trading 1% risk because intuitively a one-to-one a -one risk reward makes me nervous, so I want to pull back my risk to the process. So that Wall Street Dow Jones is 10 rand a point, sorry, $10 per point. If you're entering at 85, full risk is 85 points, $10, $850. That is if you hold to zero. In other words, it's wrong and you do nothing and you just watch your money exiting out the window. If that's the way that you'd like to do your trading, give me a shot. You can buy me some wine and I'll spend, drink your money instead. You can do fractions of a, of a contract. You can do a tenth of a contract, therefore 85 points, $85. Here's your point. Your stop loss, because you're not taking full risk, you're only risking 15 points, right? You buy 85, you sell at 70, your risk is 15 points. 
at full contract, that's 150 per contract. So if you're right, you make 150. If you're wrong, you lose 150. And then depending on your portfolio size, if your portfolio is 1,500, you take a tenth of a contract. If your portfolio is 15,000, you take a full contract. If your portfolio is 150,000, take 10 contracts. This is incremental trading. A lot of the trading we try and do is, is we want the big hit, right? We want to take a position in the, in, 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 on the Aussie and we want to make 600 points in the first two hours at 50 bucks a point to make 300,000 and boom and probably lose it that afternoon. But hey, we didn't tell our friends about that part of the story. This is the other, what, what I call the hard graph trading. This is in a sense the classic trading which people such as Jesse Livermore were doing at the turn of the previous century. My grandfather was doing it in the bucket shops of Durban in the, in the 1910s and 1920s. This is eking out little profits, little profits and stemming the, 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 the losses. In many senses it's a better, more disciplined type of trading. Those big hit it out the park we like, but they fare and, they're, they're far and few between. The better view is to say, you know what, these little incremental gains, you know, $15, and you only got a $1,500 account. $15 is, is, is not a heck lot of money for the time and effort you've put into it. And you do that three, four times a day, you make $100 a day, in time you increase the amount, it becomes significant. What you're doing here is managing your risk. The truth is you can trade with a $1,500 account. You're not making much. I would advise trading with probably a five to 10000 minimum dollar account. That said, if you're a newbie, don't start with five or ten thousand dollars because you'll lose it and then you'll hate me. And not because you, in every newbie is going to bust out at least. And then, of course, your perfect trade. So I have adjusted my perfect trade. Typically, I have seven points. Here, there are only five. This is a rules based, a disciplined process. Make sure you do perfect trades. And then, political. They don't do South African political. IG doesn't do many political. They did the Brexit. They. They did, they do the US election, and they've done bits and pieces. They don't, have a, they don't have a massive range on it. And I come back to that. The big risk with political is our own cognitive bias. The second big risk with political is the media's cognitive bias. Um, I think that the race, so technically right now, post the, the, the tape from Friday and the debate on Sunday evening, Hillary Clinton is at the strongest she's ever been against Donald Trump. Uh, she's 47, 41, but because of the way the electoral system works in the U.S. with the Electoral College, th that is practically a, an absolute whitewash. But that can change on a dime. I am not convinced Hillary's 85% chance to win, to your point. I don't think Donald's 15, but, but you know, d d this is conventional wisdom. I mean, uh, Hey, it's a slam dunk, man. It's going to happen. They're not going to Brexit. No, not even the people who were voting to leave thought they were going to leave. <laughs> no, the most, the most shocked man on that Friday morning, aside from me, was Boris Johnson. Um, I saw BBC hiding outside his house. Now, he always looks disheveled and shocked. But he comes out and you can just see. It's like he's not sure if he's scared. Of, it's like, man, this is, I mean, it was like the worst day of his life. It's like, that was not the plan. So no local offshore only. So we're still, I mean, Bernie's long gone, Joe Biden, I mean, who knows, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got 85. This, oddly enough, was yesterday morning before the debate results started coming back. So Hillary's picked up a fair bit, if, we've, if we're now in, in the sense. At that point, she was 81, she's now 85. She's picked up four points. That's a fairly, fairly chunky move. According to this, she will win it. But there are 28 days to go, and in politics, never count anything out. The point with it is it's crowd logic and biases are your risk. So you need to get a, 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 a model to the process. You could go pretty contrarian, and you look at that, and you say, ha, ha, come on, let's take Donald at what he will now be at 15. Let's see what he can do. In truth, you, you don't have to hold him all the way. He goes to 20 or 30, and you take your money, and you run. And that's probably the trade here. If you want to trade this, I expect Hillary Clinton to win the election. In the next 28 days, I expect Donald Trump to have some great periods because Hillary Clinton, I mean, currently the WikiLeaks is just leaking her emails like there's no tomorrow. And I mean, I wouldn't want my emails in public and hers are way more badder than mine. Um, so every so often there'll be some Hillary story or something like that and then Donald will get a bump and that's probably your better trade. What you're looking for is something called Bayesian theory. Go read the book Super Forecasting. Uh, Philip Tetlock and Dan Gardner, Super Forecasting. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. Talks a lot about weather. 
Weather is the hardest thing to forecast, immediately followed by everything else that we try and forecast. Um, the point with, with, so it's Bayesian probability, it's a mathematical probability that comes out of the 1930s, if I recall. And the point is, so you start with a likelihood percentage. And then you add and subtract to it as information comes in. So on the day of, you say, right, what is the likelihood of X happening? And then you dig all the information and you add and subtract and you've got a base model. And there are a couple of important points. The first is be granular. Don't say 65%, say 61 and a half. So be very specific. And then as information changes and new information comes to light, adapt your system. <coughs> and understand that if you're saying there's a 60% chance of something happening, it means that you could be right and still lose because the other 40%. A 60% chance says there's 40% the other chance happens. That book is absolutely brilliant. I read it over Christmas and I've read it twice since then. Um, and this also works best if you do it in groups because it removes your own cognitive biases or at least blunts them and also helps you find people who, who can go and dig the research. So a group of you know, two or three of you get together. I'm going to run through one which is my will essay be downgraded to junk by Standard & Poor's in December of this year. I've been running this now since January when I read the book. So. We're currently one notch above, and we have a negative outlook. That's what it all means. Uh, this is January, so we have just had Nenegate. We've just had pretty much zero growth last year. And at that point, my base case says 65% chance we go to junk. This is back in January. And then my immediate point is, what do I need to add to it? What is the immediate things that come into it? So one of them is that SMP actually hates downgrading countries to junk. And that's why I picked 65. They've only downgraded uh, 21 countries in the last 20 years. The biggest stat is only seven of those 21 have come out of junk. So when S&P puts you into junk, man, they, they hit you over the head with the saucepan at the same time. In other words, you've got to be a real basket case to go to junk. Of course, Ah, 20 years. We are not, we're one of the few countries to have come out of junk. We went into junk in the late 80s, in 94. We were still junk. We came out in 98 or 99. The point is, SMP is reticent to push people, countries to junk status. I started at 65. So, that, so that improves my likelihood to 59. So they're not keen to make junk, 59. We suddenly see all those efforts of politicians and businessmen and committees and you know what? S&P loves that, right? They're bankers. They love committees. Ah, boom. We're at 56. Then we get the threats of Gordon. Uh, uh, 60, so we weaken to 61. Then we get uh, uh, our, our growth going negative. We weaken to 63. We have a budget which was nice as mixed in there. Gordon isn't being arrested and in truth is seeming emboldened. Remember a couple of months ago, there was all that talk, the Sunday Times. He said, I'm not going to go, and he didn't, and everything seemed okay. So now we're down to 57. Every piece of information is changing my stat one way or the other. Are these changes perfect? No. I mean, we can debate them forever in a day. We're running out of time because I've got to bet I'll be finished in the next 11 minutes. The point is, and it's, 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 you know, you, you're working through probability instead of making a gut call. Then things start to happen. Uh, growth starts turning positive. We're at 54. Cautious optimism. So, oddly enough, I did a podcast last week, and I said I thought we were at 51 or 52% chance of downgrade. In other words, if you say to me, will we be downgraded in December? The answer is yes, but only just. I felt that things were starting to come together. But there's lots of things out there. And one of them arrived. So I drew this list on Sunday. At that point, I had Gordon's arrest. This afternoon, I added to November. <laughs> um, that changes things. I'll come back to it. Uh, Midterm budget policy statement, 26 October. I expected that to be positive. I expected the midterm budget policy statement to be positive because it's what Gordon does. He's very good. He gave a very good budget. But hey, it might not matter. Um, MPC, will they, what will they do with rates 24 November? I expect no change. And again, cautious optimism from the governor. Not, I mean, and when I say cautious, I mean with capital letters. Eh? He's talking, he's upgraded his growth from 0 to 0 0.2. I mean, you know, do not open the champagne. Uh, GDP number 6 December. Moot because S&P is deciding 2 December. My other risk was cabinet shuffle. Point. Gordon Arrest, I think, changes that to 61 at a minimum, at an absolute minimum. How's this happening? So what's happening is quite simple. President Zuma is going to say to the nation, you know what? Our finance minister's 
being charged by the NPA. This is a serious thing. We, we, we have to give them the space to reboot these charges. We can't have our, our government and cabinet being taunted, ta tainted like this. And remember when I, and when I say I, when President Zuma was being charged with corruption, President Mbeki relieved me of my office. I am therefore relieving Minister Gordon to go and fight the good fight. And when he's fought it, he can come back. And who wouldn't agree with that statement, except we know what the back statement is. Short answer, we have been snookered. As a country, we have been snookered. By Malefi will get the position and Gordon will be, his charges will be cleared by half past two on the 3rd of November. Whatever the point is, is that we, we're, we're, the, 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 the things that were looking good are all going back. So right now, chance of downgrade on 2 December, 61% my call. And that's what Bayesian looks at. The trick with these are those curved balls. Now, was Gordon arrest a curved ball? Uh, you know, the problem is, is that we start to believe it. Like, you know, the Sunday Times runs a story and he's not arrested. So we're like, oh, you see, um, in truth, the, 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 the mechanics to do it were still all on playing, etc., etc. Uh, GDP probably be positive, but too late for us. MPC positive, medium term positive positive, I say we're going to get downgrade on 2nd of December. If I could take the bet, I absolutely could. Here's the point. Let's say we're now sitting at 61%. If you can buy that in the binary market at 55, you're buying a 61 probability, but you're paying 55 for it. Make sense? You're buying it at discount. So if you think that Hillary's got a 90% probability and you can buy her at 80, 85, good deal. If you think Trump's got a 20% probability, which is nothing, but if you can buy 20% but pay 15, you like it. This is huge amounts of fun. I never use it for money. Well, except no, I mean, I've been positioning my portfolio for a year and a half now with an expectation of stay away from SA Inc., stay away from local banks. We're going down and it's going to be ugly. Short version of binaries, they're risky. I started right up front. I said the best outcome we can hope for is you still have 10 fingers at the end. These things are hardcore trading. Absolutely they are. The reason why they're being sold or scammed all over the internet is from a service provider. They're quite simple. So you can go and get a white label website and I can start Simon Brown's super binary website and it'll take me half a day to set it up. And you deposit money with me and you lose the money and now it's mine. If you deposit money and make money, oh, shut that website down, start new website. No, I, I'm not kidding. This is, I mean, I'm being deadly. You can buy a white label. You can do the same with FX, but in binary, it's just so much easier to do. So be careful who you transact with. Do not go against market. Do not go big. Do not ignore stops. Do not stray from systems. Do not get clever. Do not trade too, I mean, just be careful is probably what I'm trying to say. Can one make money? Yes, I did it. I spent six weeks trading these in a demo account. At the end of the day, I'm ahead. I funded it with a fictitious $150,000, and I think I'd made just over eight. Um, nice. It's not my style of trading. It requires too many hours in front of computers, particularly for me, because of my life. I'm, you know, I'm presenting in the evening. I'm TVing. I'm flying somewhere. And if I'm not presenting, TVing, or flying somewhere, I'm lying in my back drinking wine. I am not trading. That, it sounds like hard work. Again, use the demo account. Why to use the demo account? A, to try the system to test yourself more than anything to know how it works. When that alert pops up and says panic, you need to be able to exit the trade in three clicks without blinking. If you don't know the platform, you're not going to be able to do it in three clicks. The demo account more than anything is learning the system so that when it's time to panic, you can panic calmly. <laughs> well, you panic, but the system is calm. You know what I'm saying? 18, December, sorry, 18 October, which is next Tuesday, we're back. As I said, that was 4 o'clock. I've shifted. It was 1 o'clock. I've shifted it to 4 for better timings. Uh, November, we're looking at trend lines. Uh, and then in December, we're looking at indices and FX. Um, and if you're up, taken to, look, if you've got a time, me always go long. It's two minutes past seven. I have run my time. So it, it has to be done in an offshore account. You can't do it via the SA account. The Reserve Bank won't allow you <coughs> to transact. Uh, you've got to be able to hedge the product onshore. 
and you can't hedge FTSE in South Africa, so it's got to be an offshore account. Cool. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. There are contact details, lawyers, and then we'll be back on 1st November. Thank you very much for your time this evening.